Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Tim has the evening off. COVID-19 cases have rose 130% over the last two weeks in the state of Nebraska. KCAU 9's Dylan Adams tells us how schools will handle mask mandates now and quarantines when kids return this fall. It's our top story at 6. With about a month left before class resumes in Siouxland, school districts are beginning to have conversations with local health officials for guidance on establishing policies. The American Academy of Pediatrics now recommend masks should be worn in schools for anyone over two, vaccinated or not. The Center for Disease Control has said anyone unvaccinated in close contact with a COVID infected person should still quarantine for 10 days. The Nebraska State Health Department, however, is telling schools that's not necessary as long as they aren't showing symptoms. Siouxland District Health Deputy Director Tyler Brock says the confusion brings challenges for parents and schools. When the answers aren't very clear and you leave a lot up to judgment and things like that, then one of the things is that it does, it creates differences between districts. You know, this district might handle it this way and this district is going to handle it another way. And with how quickly things can change regarding the virus, it's good to have a plan in place that is adaptable to the situation, says South Sioux City Student Services Director Becky Eckhart. As soon as you think you have a plan, there is a new new information, changing information, and so that just requires the school to be flexible and adapt to the new information that comes out. Eckhart talked about the school's color system and how proud they were to never completely shut doors last year and instead staying in the yellow, which means masks were required. However, with the way things are trending in the area, she expects policies to look a little different, at least if school were to start this week. We are hopeful that we can start in green and have masks be optional and do other precautions like implement as much social distancing as possible. As for quarantining, she says they may leave it up to parents' discretion on whether their child should be in school or not. But those guidelines are not set in stone yet as they continue to speak with local health officials. People are starting to get school on the brain, um, but some of this we just need to be patient and, and see how the next few weeks pan out. Tyler Brock told me that he doesn't expect any vaccine mandates for children 12 and over to come to Nebraska, but could see the possibility of masks returning if district officials see fit. Dylan Adams, KCAU 9 News. And with Governor Pete Ricketts reaching his term limit in 2022 in Nebraska, a two-term state senator has now added his name to the list of candidates. Brett T. Lindstrom says he will bring experience and unicameral to the governor's office. I feel like I have a bigger impact as governor of the state of Nebraska and promoting those policies and uh, the message seems to be resonating. People like the fact that there's somebody young in the race. I think um, there, it's time for a new generation of leadership and that's what I believe I bring. There are four other candidates who have declared their official candidacy. Michael Connolly, Charles Burbster, Jim Pillen and... Brayland Ridnor, all Republicans, no Democratic candidates have declared their run for governor in 2022. New Iowa businesses have been on the rise this past year. Some good news tonight. Between July 1st, 2020 and June 30th of this year, Iowa had 33,260 new businesses register with the Secretary of State's office. That's almost a 36% increase from last year. Additionally, Iowans set a new record for the most new business filings in a single month. That was this March with more than 3,500 new business filings. For Sioux City, the rise in new business is a good sign of overall growth in the community. When you see more businesses, the tide rises. I mean, you see a boutique, it's going to do 10 times better when there are four other boutiques around them. KCAU 9's Jason Toktagian shares some of the new obstacles that one local business had to overcome. That's tonight at 10. South Dakota legislators have accepted a set of rules for medical marijuana for school in the state. The rules on storing and administering medical cannabis will only apply to public schools K through 5 in South Dakota. K through 12, excuse me. The panel previously refused an earlier version that would have applied to both public and private schools. Meanwhile, the state health department has yet to set any clear set of rules of medical marijuana for South Dakota. That's leaving it up to counties and cities to create their own guidelines. State health officials say they have until October to create those statewide rules, and we will keep you updated. 
After a beautiful weekend, what's in store for Siouxland this week might be on your mind, although we're getting spoiled and probably expecting, Scott, what you're telling us right now. Yeah, some more sunshine out there, Sophie, but it is going to get hotter as the week goes on. Today, though, is pretty comfortable by July standards. We had high temperatures in the low to mid 80s throughout the region, 86 in Sioux City. Today, 83 in Yankton, 84 was the high temperature this afternoon in Cherokee, Iowa. Tonight, we'll see our temperatures slip into the 50s and 60s with the reoccurrence of some dense fog in spots. Make sure to drive with caution as we go into Tuesday morning. It looks like we are going to heat things up quite a bit as we approach the weekend. Highs making a return to the 90s. We'll have all the details on that in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, continuing drought conditions in the state of South Dakota are making some producers hold off on selling their grain. Ringneck Energy buys local corn and milo from the Oneida, South Dakota area and processes it to make ethanol. Dry and wet distiller grains and corn oil, not getting enough corn is something that is always on the back of their minds when they're operating their plants. They just don't know if they're going to have a crop for the coming year. Also, so that affects our prices that we have to pay for our corn, which is the most expensive ingredient that we have here at the plant. Ethanol plants are hopeful that with timely rains, they will be able to receive enough local corn to run the plant. If not, they will have to outsource it from other areas. Well, Siouxlanders came together today to help a child as she battles cancer. The family of five-year-old Lolo Edlund held a blood drive in Sergeant Bluff today. It was at her preschool. Lolo has already had four blood transfusions throughout her ongoing battle with leukemia. The blood drive was organized to help other kids who might be in need of blood, just like Lolo. While her preschool has already thrown a welcome home party and made t-shirts for the director, Stacey Eldridge said this blood drive got the whole community involved. Here in the community, we had a principal give, we've had a secretary come to give, we had a teacher's husband show up, um, we had the librarian of the high school. So just to see the community come around a family has been amazing. It's been awesome support. That family says they appreciated all the support today as Lolo prepares for her third phase of chemotherapy this Thursday. While there are risks to every activity, fishing doesn't usually lead to a life-threatening situation. How a South Dakota man survived a freak fishing accident coming up. And no big curveballs in the weather department. It looks like some more sunshine is going to be served up for us with some gradually hotter temperatures, highs in the mid-90s later this week. And there are some very small rain chances. Your 9 on 9 forecast is coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, as you can see, even in downtown Sioux City, traffic flowing, clear skies, really nothing to complain about, no. but it does make it hard to be inside on a day like this. It does a little bit. You know, I had some opportunities last week to get outside and do the weather outdoors. Yeah. And, well, it looks like I'll be stuck in the studio this week, but it is going to get hotter later this week, Sophie. Temperatures making a return to the 90s, so get prepared for that. Here's the view now from the Yankton, South Dakota camera. We've seen a few boats out there on Lewis and Clark Lake this afternoon. Pretty peaceful at the moment, though, with those blue skies above and just a couple of stray clouds. The Almanac for today shows that our high temperature in Sioux City was able to climb to 86 just a little above average, 85 the typical high for today. 55 was our morning low temperature, and that was able to uh, bring about a dose of fog across Siouxland as temperatures were holding steady near the dew point earlier on this morning. So looks like we could have that happen again tonight. Just be prepared for some fog to come together. Looking at temperatures, they range between about 80 and 85 at this time. Just one exception on the map, that is Storm Lake in Buena Vista County with a temperature of 79 degrees there. It is 83 in Norfolk, 82 in Wayne, 83 degrees outside now in Yankton. It's 82 for Denison and Audubon. Current temperature of 86 in Takema. So feeling pretty good. The humidity is limited. We're seeing dew points now in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Once you get that closer to 70 is when it feels muggy outside. Wind speeds currently just about 5 to 10 miles per hour as they're directed in primarily from the east. Currently at 5 in Storm Lake, 7 from the northeast in Carroll, and a current wind speed of 7 from the southeast 
southeast in Norfolk. So again, we're seeing some fairly light winds outside, not making for much of a disturbance. Looking at the radar picture now, you can see that as you travel to the north, there have been some strong thunderstorms that have occurred. In fact, a severe thunderstorm warning was put out for Fargo, North Dakota earlier that this afternoon with some large hail and damaging wind gusts, but it looks like everything is continuing to dissipate as it moves from north to south. We just have a light splash of rain currently in western Minnesota. And that's really going to be the case for the next several days here as high pressure continues to establish itself in the southwestern United States. It looks like this is going to be a very slowly evolving pattern here with a lot of hot air over the center of the country. And that is going to continue to push the storm track well to the north too. So it looks like our rain chances are going to be slim to none here as we continue through the next several days. In fact, no rain is expected really until we get to Saturday. And even then, the chance is rather slim. As we move through the next 10 days, you can see that amounts are going to range somewhere between a tenth and a half an inch across the entirety of Siouxland. So it looks like uh, slim pickings in the precipitation department here, maybe a little bit more toward O'Neill. But again, we're talking about 10 days worth of precipitation and only a tenth of an inch in Sioux City in totality. The drought monitor shows that we do continue to have moderate drought conditions across Woodbury County and Sioux City. And things are worse as you move to the northeast toward the Iowa Great Lakes. Severe drought there and extreme drought toward Chamberlain, South Dakota. The only area which has seen some decent conditions is to the south as you get closer to Omaha. They've had a decent amount of precipitation. But again, everybody in, you, in need of some more rain and it looks like that is going to be fairly hard to come by. Tonight, a low temperature of 60 degrees, mild with some patchy fog once again. Tomorrow, a high of 88, sunny and somewhat hot. And that'll definitely be the case later this week as temperatures look to surge into the mid-90s starting on Thursday going into Friday. And feels like temperatures will be up there in the triple digits, so we could have some heat advisories coming together later this week. On Saturday, a small chance of thunderstorms as it looks like some cooler air will start to work into Siouxland. So along that leading edge of cooler air, we could be able to spark off a storm or two, but not a whole lot there. High temperatures around 90 degrees for most of next week with sunny skies along the way. Well, here's a great picture of a sunset in Jefferson, South Dakota. If you have a picture that you want to share with Siouxland, find our website, SiouxlandProud.com. Go to the weather tab. Send us your photos. Yeah, interesting shots of the sun lately. Keep those coming. Scott, thanks a lot. Some good ones. That's right. And Siouxland is seeing some perfect weather for summer activities, as we just heard, like fishing. But it wasn't a perfect day on the water for one South Dakota fisherman. Why, this man says he's lucky just to be alive now after a fishing lure entered his heart. Next. A northeastern Minnehaha County man is thankful tonight following what his family is calling a freak fishing accident involving that lure. Carter Schmidt spoke with him and his family. Todd Thiesenvitz was fishing on a lake near Clark, South Dakota on July 7th when the barely believable happened. I seen the bottom bouncer come flying towards me like in slow motion. Well, I thought it just hit me in the chest, but when it hit me in the chest, I felt something right here and then it... Uh, um, I realized that it was stuck inside of me. Todd was reeling a large northern pike to the surface when the fishing hook broke. It went into my left ventricle of my heart, and uh, there's a sack around your heart. It went through that and then it into the heart muscle itself. Todd was fishing with his wife and daughter, Kiana, who is a nurse. My first instinct is not to pull it, to leave it in. Whenever anything happens, you instantly want to get it out of you because you think that would help. Todd's wife, Marie, drove the boat back to this boat landing, which at the time was full of first responders. Every wave that it hit was making him scream in more pain. So it was, it was nerve-wracking, and I, I had to just kind of keep looking over my shoulder, but I knew that Kiana had him, and I knew that she was going to take care of him. Kiana played a crucial part in her dad's survival. We went fishing on that same lake the day before, and she wasn't with us. If it would have happened then, I don't know what the outcome would have been. Once they got off the water, Todd was taken by ambulance to a hospital in Watertown and then airlifted to Sioux Falls, where he had surgery to remove the remaining part of the bottom bouncer. This is actually it, and they... What's left of it? What's left, yeah. Um, in the ambulance ride, which was probably like 20 minutes, the normal bottom bouncer has, you know, additional length here. They cut it off and then clamped it and then uh, taped the clamp that was holding the remainder of the rod down to his chest. Todd says he is thankful. My daughter, my wife, um, all the caretakers from uh, Clark, South Dakota, Prairie Lakes Hospital in Watertown, and uh, the people in Sioux Falls. They're like, 
it's one in a million chance that he's uh, still here with us, you know. Had I pulled it out, they said within 30 minutes, definitely been dead. We are truly blessed. Truly. Truly blessed. Not only because he's here, but he's doing so well. I told my wife that we should should have bought some lotto tickets that day, you know. <laughs> Never know. But this is better than winning the lottery. In Minnehaha County, Carter Schmidt. Pretty incredible. Well, switching gears now, we do have sports coming up next. A beautiful day to be outside. Don't go away. I think, like you said, you know, nothing to hang your head about because at this level in the, the tournament, mm -hmm. everyone is really good. So, I'll just address uh, the elephant in the room real quick. We had a technical issue, so <laughs> be sure to tune in tonight at 10. We will have all your highlights. We'll show you all of this. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I try to narrate it as best as I can, but I'm no Noah Sacco. He is out there right now in Fort Dodge. and uh, He's got the goods. Yeah, he's got everything you guys will want to see tonight at 10. Stick with us. We'll also have Substate Baseball semifinals. Plenty of action going on, postseason, postseason, postseason. My favorite time of year, and full disclosure, <laughs> everyone knows I love baseball. So looking forward to your segment later at 10. We'll catch you. Thanks a lot. And we'll check in for one final forecast for your work week. First, let's take you outside right now in Wayne, America, on this sunny evening. Finally tonight, some dogs enjoy the water. And we'll go for a swim. Does your dog like the water? No. Okay. Winston doesn't. I don't know why. <laughs> Not I wish Winston. He did. That's too bad. You don't have a dog. I have two. You do have two dogs. And they hate the water. You don't, okay, you it's don't so talk weird. about them very yeah. much, but but weird. Okay, so none of our dogs here at KCA, you like this, but check this <laughs> out. A dog in Britain was at sea for three hours. That's a long time. Wow. Ollie, the Springer Spaniel, was rescued in Wales when a trooper, a volunteer lifeboat crew, after he spent those three hours swimming off the coast, we have to say it, doggy paddle, right? He was found <laughs> around three miles from where he'd first gone into the water, so he made some time. He was spotted at the base of a sea cliff by a kayaker who then alerted lifeguards wow. and they were able to call in help and assist in Ollie's rescue. I mean, it's hard to tell from the video, but he looks like he's in pretty good condition after being in the water and he's lucky he didn't turn into a shark bait or whatever swimming around in that water there because he's probably uh, pretty hungry. Yes, yeah, he's Dare probably rename him <laughs> Ollie the Otter. Oh, that's good. That's oh, very good, Jake. Good swimmer. I think we've dubbed him that. And a great day to take a swim if you're anywhere near a pool or a clean body of water here in Siouxland. Yeah, for sure. We'll see a low temperature tonight of 60 degrees, some patchy fog, and for tomorrow, a high of 88, bright and sunny. It'll become hotter later this week with highs in the mid-90s. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 10, including those highlights. Good night.